it is an honor and a privilege to be here with you all. And um, it's been a minute since I've been here. Uh, Mr. Waters reminded me of that this morning. Um, I used to be assistant chaplain here 25 years ago. And um, it just, and I had vestments and everything back then. So I had the whole get up and everything. It was, it was a little different. And um, I just want to say it's a privilege and honor to come before you today. And um, I just want to say um, thanks for this privilege. Um, I have some slides you'll see. And my computer is now acting up, so I don't know why it's doing this. But you know how that goes. It's called uh, Murphy's Law. Whatever can go wrong will go wrong. But I have this, so it, we, we can keep going. Um, just while I'm here, if you, you can go back one, my bad. While I'm here, this is an observatory. Um, today we're talking about grace, but one of the things that's important to me is, you know, some of the things that are important to me. Like, I love space, I love telescopes, you all know I love physics, all that good stuff. And so this is a place that um, I actually went to visit when I was a junior in, in high school. It's called Yerkes Observatory. It's in Wisconsin. Um, but one of the things you'll see, we start talking about this, is that, you know, one of the things about grace is that it adds something to how we see the world. And you think of telescopes, they help you understand and see the world. So this is an important telescope to me. Next. All right, so each of us um, has essentially a way that we look at the world, a frame of reference. And that frame of reference is essentially um, how we see the world and we bring it with us no matter where we go. And um, as you can see from Dracula, he's very upset seeing his um, brother, his son-in-law, um, trying to put a contact lens in his eye. Some of you know Hotel Transylvania um, and all that good stuff. But the issue is, is that he can't understand how you would put something in your eye to help you see. It was out of his framework. And the whole idea of the lens is something that we have to adjust sometimes. And so that's what's going on there. Um, but that's the thing about our frames, is our frames have strengths. They have weaknesses. They have biases. They are incomplete. They are based on many inac sometimes inaccurate information or old information. And understanding that is important when we bring our framework to play with other people, because we have to humbly come before them, understand that our framework may need some work, and theirs may as well. And so one of the things about um, what I'm asking you guys to do or think about today is how do we add grace to our, the way we see the world, okay? And um, you know, that's one of the things about it is that it allows us to see those imperfections and deal with those. Next. All right, you all heard that long scripture this morning. It was about the parable of the laborers. And I love the stick figures here, because the stick figures kind of put it in perspective. Um, you know, you see they have angry faces on. And so one of the things that happens when we are given an opportunity to see generosity, sometimes generosity is great when we're not the ones who is coming short, right? And so what was happening is that the, the guy who owned the vineyard, he gave money to everybody. And think of it as denarius as a day's wage. And so it essentially is a, you know, it's, it's what you would need to have um, to pay your bills, so to speak. The folks who came last were the ones who were looking for work all day long, but they didn't get it. But at the same time, the, 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 um, the person who owned the, the vineyard says, you know, just because they came late doesn't mean I can't give them a full day's wage. And so sometimes we, you know, we get upset at that because Somebody who had generosity didn't give me that extra money because I was there the entire time. And th the reason why I use this parable is because it deals with grace. Grace is giving, is, is somebody doing over, above and beyond and even addressing imperfections. They weren't there in the morning to get the job. They weren't there um, um, because they were out looking for work. And so as a result, Sometimes people still need livable wages, and they ended up choosing to, to come for that one hour. They showed up. And that's the important thing about this process, is that we show up. And so, the, you know, grace is something that is part of who we are, or part of something that we can give, 
but it's also something, if we add to our frameworks of how we see the world, it allows us just a little bit of space to deal with imperfections. When somebody was late, when somebody was not able to hand something in, when somebody messed up on the field, grace allows us to have a little bit more patience and to expect it to hopefully give them space and time to expect greater things from them as well. All right, I am now up and running. Here we go. Um, all right, so one of the things I want us to think about is remember that our framework impacts our joy. So one of the things that happens is the people who came late they got paid a full day's wage and did one hour's work. How do you think they felt? Pretty good, right? And the other folks, instead of seeing the other people as being important, they saw their own pocketbook as being important. And they, they got what they were promised. It wasn't like they, weren't, they didn't get what they were promised. But what happened was is that when they got at the end, they grumbled. Their joy was sucked from them because they weren't able to give grace. Remember that. If you want to have joy, you have to support those even in their imperfections versus think about, what did I lose out on? All right, next. All right, good old Afro Sheen. All right, a bit about my background. One of the things about me is a lot of people say, you know, where is Mr. Dixon coming from? He's a reverend, he's a science person, you know, he's got this light skin, all this good stuff. He says he's from Chicago. One of the things that I've had to face all my life is trying to find where I fit and knowing what my identity is. Um, I grew up on the wrong side of the, of the tracks, the wrong side of the expressway, south, far south side of Chicago. Um, it was black neighborhood. We didn't have a lot of funding in our schools, et cetera, et cetera. And I was, it, you know, a, me a mediocre student <laughs> until the sixth grade. That's who I was, all right? Um, but, you know, one of the things that I had was a teacher who thought enough about me to give me stars. Those little things, you know, you got, you know, put on the, on the, on the walls. My sixth grade teacher gave me stars for reading, and the rest was history. Okay, so what was happening then is that those stars were a grace to me, a gift to help me see the world differently and see myself differently. And so what happened was is that um, I started reading. I, I wanted, like a lot of y'all, you know, sometimes we want to get, get, as, get away with as much as we can. So I was getting credit for reading short stories. Love Ray Bradbury, you know, short stories, science fiction, got into science, that started the whole thing. And it's just those little things that matter so much. And so that started me on grace. Um, I also had the opportunity to go to a school that was integrated, um, which was helpful, but it allowed me to see myself like everyone else, not as somebody from another side, or the other side of the tracks, but somebody who could fit in on either side. Those things are vital, and again, a grace. One of the things that I saw was, you know, the importance of relationship. And so one of the things that happened with me is that I had an Episcopal background, you know, where I was. Um, there was a lot of Baptist churches on my side of the tracks and other things. But that, and that, that the, the church found, foundation I had was solid. But, you know, I had stopped going to church for a while. And uh, my sister, who was a college student, had did some stuff and did some things with missionary work and stuff like that in the city. She had a group of friends that she worked with all summer. And um, my, you know, my faith was end up being based on what I saw, what they had. They loved each other. And it was seen by, you know, I had to clean up the backyard. They had their picnic in our yard and all this good stuff. But one of the things I saw that they had for each other was a care, a sincere care, and they, you know, there was this one, and again, it was an integrated group, it was, but this was one white girl who spent a lot of time on her hair every morning. And the gift that they gave her, of course, was a little bottle of Afro Sheen. And that little thing said, oh, they get each other. They love each other. That's something I want. And that was what my faith was based on. Not merely on, you know, the whole bunch of things that you do when you go to church, 
but people who cared about each other. And that to me is again another grace that helped me to see the world in a way that was, I think, more full. Next. Now, the other thing you have to deal with is how other people see you. There's a lens that you see with, but it's another thing, another, the lens that people see you with. You gotta deal with that, okay? You know, one of the things that I had to deal with, you know, being what they call high yellow, that's what they call light-skinned folks in the, in the neighborhood, um, is that I was sometimes, again, my family was in Morgan Park in Chicago, South Side, forever when it first started. But, you know, there were folks in my neighborhood who did not know that. And they would see me, and my, and so my, my mother was even lighter than me, and they would say, get out of our neighborhood, white folks. They may not say those nice terms, but you understand what I said. I had to deal with that in my own neighborhood, okay? Understand that. That's part of this process. Is that's the lens that they were seeing through. And understand, their lens may have been based off of trauma and other stuff that they had to deal with, right? That does not mean <laughs> that uh, it was right. And so at some point, I have to tell them that it's rude, one, to call me that, but it's rude to, call any, to, to say that to anybody. So that's one thing that, you know, even giving grace and correction to somebody is something that we do. I also have to deal with, I told you I went to an integrated high school, I have to deal with, you know, folks who were racist. Now, y'all know I'm a physics teacher, but my physics teacher, he gave me three Fs. That was something that stood out to me, you know, on these three quizzes. And I had to say, okay, now I was out doing other stuff, so when I got him back, it's like, oh, okay, this is, this is interesting. And I got to check, I checked my answers with, every, with the other group, the, you know, the people who had gotten you know, A's, and the ones they got wrong, I had gotten right, and all the other answers were the same. And it was hundreds, three hundreds. Now I say this is because I had to deal with the lens he was dealing with. He did not like that I came from the other side of the tracks. He did not like the fact that you know, well, you know, I, I had potential. And he did not expect me to bring my father up you know, to help correct that. That got corrected, okay? But what I'm just saying to you in this process is that that lens is how people will see you and understand that we have to get beyond that. Um, the other thing is that we have to be patient like with the folks yelling out at us and the folks who would try and um, hurt us. But we also have to make sure that we know where we sit. And so one of the things that happens is, is this, is that you know Paul was a person in the Bible as well who was one of those latecomers. He was a person who tried to kill Christians, or at least help kill Christians, right? God, in Christianity, God gave him grace to, to, to become blind, <laughs> to try and figure things out on a Damascus road. But because of that, he, he understood, he had joy that he was a latecomer. And that's part of this process is that, um, you know, I myself feel like I'm a latecomer. That's what gives me joy in this process. And instead of seeing yourself as somebody who, um, um, is one of those people who've been working all the time and other people need to do other things to earn X, Y, and Z. Think about what it means to be a latecomer and receive that joy and work hard because of that. That's what Paul did. I just mentioned that because again, what I want you to think is in terms of grace, next, is what sacrifice really means, okay? Sacrifice in this person's definition, is doing something that you have never done to get something that you never had. Sacrifice is not giving something up, but doing something more. And I dare say, but adding grace to that, it allows you to see people as they really are. Instead of seeing somebody who's getting away with something, you see someone who is precious. As, a, as again, part of my faith is that everyone is an image bearer of God. If that's the case, they are exceedingly precious. And so with this in mind, when you add grace to how you see the world, um, you, you don't stop, you don't just worry about what you didn't get in your pocket. You are very appreciative of those people who got that living wage. All right, so one of the things I, I, I say, you, you see when, when you're um, dealing with grace is that you see a need, you feel a need. You give yourself grace especially during these, ancient day, these anxious days of college admissions, midterm progress reports, playoffs are coming up, we're dealing with COVID. It's really, it's really times of anxiety. So what we need is give ourselves some grace. Um, remember that grace is a sacrifice 
the workers who paid the same, who got paid the same as everybody else, had to sacrifice their feelings, right? And they could sacrifice their feelings, or they could, you know, just get angry. And if they sacrifice their feelings and then say, you know, I'm glad for you, then they change that very perspective. Okay, so remember, sacrifice is not merely giving something up, it's gaining something of more value. Those people were worth more than being right about how much money I got. Next. All right, last story, real quick. And going back to that um, observatory, Yerkes Observatory. I was in Model Unit, UN when I was a junior. We had a conference in Wisconsin, Williams Bay, Wisconsin. I was um, representing the Netherlands in the Security Council. I wanted to get an award, et cetera, et cetera. But one of the things I had to do is extend myself grace. <laughs> Yerkes Observatory is in Williams Bay, Wisconsin. I said, I've got to see this place. You know, one of the things about this whole process is that you have to think about what is important to you? What grace are you gonna give yourself? And so, you know, one of the things I wanted to do is to get to the sea at Yerkes Observatory and I needed grace from my advisor. I needed grace for myself. I needed to understand and be willing to sacrifice that I might not win an award because I slipped out and gave myself a little grace. And so that's something that I needed to do. And, and so that's one of the things about grace. It gives you the right priorities and, and it helps you to see what's really important. Next. Um, one of the things about it is you see that the guy with the crazy hair, that's, that's Einstein. That's the Yerke Observatory. You would think it was a bigger telescope. This is the biggest refracting telescope in the world. There's one in Russia bigger, but we don't, count, we don't talk about that one. Um, didn't work too well. But what I'm saying is that this is a picture of it. Not a big one, but it's an old thing. It, it was made in 1897. Um, sometimes you gotta give grace to things that are a little older. Um, some of us with gray hair, you know? But one of the things about this is that, um, you know, they don't, they don't know how to make lenses anymore. That's why this, is a, this telescope is the biggest of its kind to this day. But again, um, prioritizing and giving grace to yourself is, um, deals with the choices that we make. We have a choice of how we treat things. We have a choice to be mad or happy at the end of the day when we're getting paid. We have a choice to give extend grace and to receive grace or not. And so remember those choices that you have. Next. Um, one of the things about grace is that we also gotta be real. One of the things that's easy to do, without, oh, it's so kind, you need to be kind to people, you need to do this. Let's understand what happens in the real world. I can tell you now, some people have seen me drive, Sam has seen me drive, I, in general, driving around here is not that big a deal. But I get an expressway, sometimes I get a little bit upset. I sometimes don't want to give people grace. And you know in Boston, people will tell you, um, you know, they'll, they'll tell you you're number one, and they use a finger that they, that's not the usual one for number one um, in their driving, right? The reason why I'm saying this is that when you're dealing with grace, we have to understand that it's, it's, it's something that you're working, it's at work on. So give, you have to give yourself some time for your own imperfections because this is a process. You know, you're not gonna be able to do everything, I see everything, this is a frame that you bring with you. For it to change, it takes time, right? And my wife works on me and when I'm driving, when people cut me off and it's like, ah, I gotta count to five. <laughs> and the reason why this is, is key is that when you deal with the reality of grace, is that sometimes it's easier to talk about it than to execute it, but that change is the process. Last but not least, Grace allows you to expand your framework, but people will put you in a box, know how to get out of the box, know how to understand that people will say, get out of your neighborhood. I'm a person who's, I'm a person of science, person of faith. You know, some people say you can't do both. They'll tell me to get out of their neighborhood, science or faith or whatever. And you know, I get, I have to drop some knowledge on people like George Lamartre who was, um, you know, the guy who invented, or who came up with the whole idea of um, the Big Bang, Catholic priest. People sometimes don't understand that these things are, are overlapping. And so that's part of this process. 
All right, so I'm gonna close. You may feel that you are in the wrong place, in the wrong neighborhood, or people don't get you. You like things that don't fit in your lane. You may get, be, you know, be given an opportunity that others feel you don't deserve. Do your part, show up and work. Visit your passions. When you get the chance, it is a grace that you can give yourself. And be willing to, to sacrifice and even lose but know when you walk in grace, good things will happen to you. All right, by the way, I did get that award for the Security Council, and I want you to remember to, to go and grow in grace, my Brooksonians. Love y'all.